this is my city, London. 800 square miles, vast, sprawling, restless. Over 8 million people live and work, love and play, hate and die. On the fringe, hidden in the shadows, those who prey on the innocent. Steal, destroy, attack and kill. When they do, it's a job for me and the Criminal Investigation Department. Evening, Mr. Brown. Oh, hello, Mrs. Tennyson. I, I didn't expect you to be up. Well, I, I knew you'd be working late, and I thought you might like a cup of tea. Oh, that's awfully kind of you, but I'm, I'm rather tired. Mr. Brown, you will it... feel free to use the sitting room whenever you want to, if you want to watch television or anything like that. Thank you. I don't expect you to stay cooped up in that room night after night. It's very comfortable. You, you are happy here, aren't you, Mr. Brown? I, I do want you to feel at home. It's very pleasant, Mrs. Tennyson. Thank you. Good night.
You remember Carrie, don't you? Remember how little she was for seven and a half? Everybody used to say she was the most beautiful little girl they'd ever seen. Oh, Carrie. Carrie. I have to do these things. I have to. It's the only way to make people realize that you need never have died. The only way. Fire. Good morning, Grady. Anything new on Bert Harvey? Ah, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. We found the gun. Good, good. Yes, ah. it makes the case against Harvey much stronger. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Can I have a word with you? Good morning, Dylan. Join the queue. Morning, Joe. Now, let me get these two out of my hair before you start. Now, can you prove that Harvey fired the gun? No, sir. Well, can you prove he owned it? I hope so, sir. We're working on it. I'd like to pull Harvey in, sir. You nail him down with a the gun, then pull him in. Yes, sir. Thanks. Now then, how about your missing stripteaser? What's her name? Uh, Cherry Blossom. She's turned up. Married to a grocer in Stratford. Problem is, a nightclub owner reported she was missing. Do I tell him? Jack Wheeler owns that nightclub, doesn't he? Yes, sir. Yeah, well, tell him she's turned up, but don't say where. Give Cherry a fighting chance with a grocer. Yes, sir. Thanks. Ah, do you have any problems, Joe? No, but you have. Oh? The fire department's in there, Chief Carmichael. Oh, yes, that Lambeth blaze last night. I imagine, sir. What's known? Very little. Four people burnt to death. What about PC Jarvis? In hospital. Still alive, but critical. Very badly burnt. Anybody phoned his wife? Mm, Chief Superintendent Division. She's all right. Where's the answer to every maiden's prayer this morning? Oh, he went down to Lambeth to have a look at the ruins. Thought he might get something for you before Carmichael arrived. Has he phoned through? Not yet, but I'll put him through when he comes. Ah, it's nice to see that everybody's on the ball this morning. Thank you, sir. Hello, Mike. Morning, George. I was going to phone you about that fire in Lambeth. The police constable got badly burned. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. George, in the last four months, we've had five similar fires. Last night, made six. Similar? What do you mean? Each one destroyed a tenement building which had been condemned, waiting for demolition. Well, I don't quite follow. That sort of property's liable to burn. Where does the yard come in? Last night's fire was definitely arson. Oh. And the others? Arson is suspected in three cases. I see. The mortality rate would have been a lot higher if some of the buildings hadn't been vacant at the time. Some of them? They were all condemned. There shouldn't have been a soul in any of them. Yes, I know. But the fact is that... Yes, yes, yes. Better than sleeping under bridges. <laughs> oh, there's one other thing. In each case except the first, a man phoned in the alarm. He gave the exact location of the fire and then rang off. Would you like to have a look? Yes, I would. Well, straight away? Mm-hmm. All right. Joe, get a car immediately, will you? The keen phone suit from Lambeth turned to stay there. I'm on my way. But you got a man down there already? Of course. Come in. Good morning, Mr. Brown. I thought I heard you stirring. Thank you, Mrs. Tennyson. Um, Mr. Brown, I, I was thinking last night, well, I don't really know anything about you. I mean, uh, are you married or anything like that? I was. Oh, um, and uh, is your wife? My wife is dead. Oh, I am sorry. Thanks. I lost my Frank about seven years ago. Don't think I'm ever going to get used to it, really. Being all on my own. Mr. Oh. Brown! Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. It slipped out of my hand. I'll replace it, of course. Oh, don't be silly. It's just an old cut from a set my sister gave me. I never liked it, really. Oh, so clumsy. Oh, all men are clumsy. My Frank used to help me sometimes with the washing up, and almost every night he'd drop something. Uh, I didn't mind, really, of course. Oh, I must get dressed now, Mrs. Tennyson. Yes, of course. I'm sorry. I, I know I do go on. It's just that... Well, you're so easy to talk to. Oh, thank you. Now I... Don't you worry about this silly old cup. It's not worth sixpence. And 
If there's anything else... I, I will ask, Mrs. Tennyson. I will ask. Thank you. Oh, my God. I thought the house was empty. I never dreamt there was anybody in it. Honest to God, I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. Carrie! Oh, I'm sorry. Carrie! Oh. Well, he evidently started from the top, sluicing paraffin along the passages under the doors and down the stairs. We found his can on the floor. First time he's actually left any evidence behind. What about the family? Trapped in the second floor front, asleep. The time they woke up. Where was Jarvis? On the second floor outside their door. He was obviously trying a single-handed rescue operation. Mrs. Critchley, this is Commander Gideon of Scotland Yard. Uh -huh. Mrs. Critchley, I'd like you to tell the commander exactly what you told me. Well, why can't you tell him? Waste the time, me saying everything twice. Yes, but I'd like him to hear it from you. Now, you live in a flat in a corner house across the street? You was in it. You should know. I've been there 40 years now. The government wants to tear it down. Don't care what happens to old people these days. Yes, well, you had insomnia, so you got up to make a cup of tea. I told you that. What time? Ten o'clock. Exactly. The cuckoo. The cuckoo? In the clock. My boy Henry gave it me for Mother's Day. He's married now and he's going to live in Cornwall. Mrs. Critchley. Got two children, boy and a girl. I've checked the clock. It's accurate. Go on, please. The girl's name's Maureen. She's five and a half. No, he, he means about last night. I've already told you. I was waiting for the kettle to boil, looking out the window. I see this man coming along, wheeling his cycle. He gets on, rides away and turns down Gordon Street. The policeman yelled after him something about lights, but the man kept on going. And that's all I know. Uh, what about the policeman? Oh, that's when the whistle went. What whistle? On the kettle. And I didn't know anything else until I heard the fire engine. Well, thank you, Mrs. Critchley. You, you've been very helpful. Thank you. Very. And you've been a nuisance. Ten o'clock, eh? Does that help? Mike sir. I've been on to the telephone people. Whoever reported the fire used a phone box. Just shouted the word fire and gave the address. So it was treated as an abandoned emergency call, eh? Yes, the operator left the plug-in. An engineer traced the call to a phone box at the corner of Hudson and Mallet Streets. Four minutes past ten on the dot. It's four minutes after the cyclist left here. Yeah. Assuming the caller and the firebug are one and the same man. Well, Detective Chief Inspector Keane, how long is it since you rode a bicycle? I can manage. I'll pick up a bike somewhere and pedal it off. Time it carefully. See if it makes any sense. Right. Well, Mike, I've got a feeling this is going to be a weird one. Hello, Sonny. I'm a police officer. Could I, uh, could I borrow your bicycle? You're kidding. For about an hour. How about it? Not allowed to loan it to nobody. Your mum said if I did, she'd kill me. Well, um, how about renting it? Half a crown? Sure you won't pinch it? Promise. Ten bob. The future of England is in good hands. It's a deal. Thanks. Sure you can ride? Got my first bicycle when I was nine. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. Thanks. Hey, mister, keep to the left, will you? Michael, just said these over. There are full reports of all six fires. Thanks. Uh, George, did you know that Jarvis has a little girl aged six? No, I didn't. Thanks for telling me. 
Look, call the hospital, will you, and see if there's anything new. Yes, right away. I think I'm onto something. For the past hour, I've been checking in. What's the matter? Oh. Bicycle clips. For a bike? Yes. Good thing your tailor didn't see it. Have you defrocked? Well, what have you found out? Well, here's the street, yeah. right? There's a the tenement building. Intersection. Now, the call reporting the fire was made from here. But the odd thing is, there are three public call boxes. One, two, three. All closer to the scene of the fire. Could the fire be seen from there? Impossible. And whoever gave the alarm started the fire. Exactly. Otherwise, he wouldn't have known about it. He starts the fire, doesn't stay to watch it, but he leaves evidence of arson, and then phones in the alarm. Motive, David. What's the motive? I've spoken to the hospital. And? If there was a category worse than third-degree burns, Jarvis is in it. He knew there were people on the second floor. Trying to get him out, I haven't got a chance. Not then, not now. I wonder how many men there are on the force like Jarvis. Plenty. All right, David, come on motive. What is it? The risk of being unoriginal. Love, money, revenge. Well, check them all. Look for any common factors, common ownership, common insurer. Anyone who might have benefited from the properties being destroyed. Right. Look, son, there's a cricket bat and a roller skate lying in the hall that I nearly broke my neck on. I was just going to pick them up. So it's happened at last, eh? What has? A new dance that entirely eliminates the necessity for a partner. This isn't dancing. You're having a fit? Wrestling. I'm in the school wrestling team, and I'm supposed to practice. Oh. This is the last time, absolutely the last time, I loan you anything. What have I done now? Aren't you going to say hello? Oh, hi, Dad. All right. Now, where is it, you little stinker? Where's what? My pen. I put it back in your desk. No wonder I couldn't find it. Oh, don't go running off somewhere. Dinner's in ten minutes. Okay, Mum. Hello, darling. Oh, now, where's Prue? Do you any minute. Oh, good. I get it. Yes? When? All right, Joe, thanks for telling me. Goodbye. George, what is it? Jarvis. The consular tried to save the family in that Lambeth fire last night. He's dead. <laughs> Maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I didn't want them to die, but they had to. I see that now. The way Christ died for our sins. It's working. And because they died, those poor innocent people. But you didn't kill them. No. The landlords did, the authorities did. They murdered them, not you. Now people are beginning to sit up and take notice, even the newspapers. If people die, something will be done. That's the answer. It's sad and terrible, and I hate it. 
but more people have to die. Martha, guess what? 24 pounds today. Best day for a month. We put it all in the new house fund. Won't it be lovely? Everything new and clean. And Carrie, you're going to have a big room all to yourself. Will you? Yes, of course you can come into our bed. Whenever you're unhappy or lonely. Martha, you must remind me to... Martha? Where are you? Carrie? C -c Come back? Oh, please? Please? Come back? Come back. <laughs> I've checked everything. There's no motive behind these fires. The first fire in the series was four months ago. What do we know about that? Terrace House, Battersea, scheduled for demolition. Occupied by Thomas Bishop, his wife Martha, their daughter Carrie. Wife and daughter both burned to death. Who gave the alarm? A neighbor. How? Public call box. So the first fire was the only one lacking the anonymous phone call. Yeah, that's right. What do you got on Bishop? No record. Apparently a devoted family man, works for A.J. Gilliatt and Company. He's a door-to-door -door salesman. No anonymous phone call. It makes Bishop the sort of odd man out, doesn't it? George, why don't I have a word with him? Hey, you do that. I suppose it has occurred to you that every one of these fires was on a Wednesday night. Yeah, I wondered about that. Sort of a ritual. Kind of a memorial service. It means we're looking for a psycho. Yeah. And this is a Wednesday night. And when did Bishop quit? Just after his house burnt down. He was one of the best salesmen I ever had. Mr. Gilliard, why did he live in a house scheduled for demolition? Waiting for a new council estate to open up. Long wait. Ah, oh, yes. Here it is. Mm -hmm. This is his original job application, sales record, etc. He was with me for ten years. I can't imagine Tom being in trouble with the law. He was as honest as they come. Did you see him after the fire? Once. Told him his job was waiting for him any time he liked to come back. Never seen a man so broken up. Never seen him since. That was four months ago. Any idea what he was using for money? Tom was saving up for his kid's education. He'd probably have a couple of hundred pounds in the bank. All right. What's this? Oh, uh, that's a list of all the people Tom called on his sales route. Used to collect the monthly installments on the goods he sold. You don't happen to have a photograph? Know of any relatives? He had a brother somewhere. Let's see, Staines? Yes, that's it, lived in Staines. Uh, I'll take this along if I may. Go ahead. I don't know what you want Tom for, but if you find him and he's in need of any help, you can tell him to call on me. I'll do that. Thank you very much, Mr. Gilliot. <laughs> Sir, she's all yours. And a very fine machine, if I do say so myself. Yes, I'm sure it is. Thank you. 
What are you doing? We can't have you riding a scooter in a cap like that, sir. Well, I assure you, I'm no, 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 thanks, sir. No thanks. Free helmets and goggles with every machine purchased. No, no. Here we are, sir. Just try it on like that. I, I, I really don't need it. Oh, you do, sir. You do. Besides, it's free. That's it. You look very smart indeed, sir. Thank you. brother wasn't very happy about handing that over. Oh, well, he looks normal enough. Yeah, don't forget that was taken before his house burned down. Yeah. All right, get it over to Photo Repro. Mm -hmm. And call in the district's chief superintendents this afternoon. Give them photos and descriptions to circulate to all divisions. If seen, bring in for questioning. Right. And David, you better do a tour of divisions yourself tonight. Make sure they're on the toes. Right. What is it, Caroline? <laughs> no, no. Harriet. Yeah, well, tell her it's Wednesday night. You have to go to a sort of memorial service. Thanks. Down your socks, Mr. Brown. I hope you don't mind. I rescued them out of your laundry. Oh, you shouldn't have bothered. Thank you. These big laundries shrink socks something. What's this? You leave that alone. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it, it belonged to my little girl. How did it get burned? I hurried home that day because I'd made 24 pounds commission. See, I, I never really had customers. No, I had friends. And they trusted me, so I... Well, anyway, I hurried home that day. There was all these people in the street. I, I didn't realise at first that it was my house. And then I saw the fire engine. It was all over by then. The fire was out. The firemen were very nice, very kind. Looked all through the ashes. All we ever found was Gary's doll. Oh, Mr. Brown, I'm so terribly sorry. You're so kind, Mrs. Tennyson. People nowadays seem to have forgotten how to be. They don't care about others, how they live, or how they die. Yes, well, well, I'd better start your dinner. They don't care. Where's the man today who loves his neighbour? I'm going to change all that. I'll make them care! Anybody need me? No, we live in a peaceful city. No crime, no criminals. Church is full. Jail's empty, birds singing. Oh, in that case, you're both unemployed. Joe, when you go off tonight, leave an order that I'm going to be called at home if anything happens. Right. Yeah, I wish you hadn't brought up that business about Wednesday night. Yeah, so does Harriet. There's one thing in our favour. He's never hit us two weeks running. I've been on to all divisions. There's a special alert on every slum area. I'll drive around myself and check up on things. Good, good. Well, see you both tomorrow. Yes, good night. Good night. Good night, Joe.
You know, I've been talking to some people about these fires. Oh, some funny ideas. Huh? They seem to think it's a good way of clearing out the slums. Except for the loss of life, of course. Yeah, except for the loss of life. to make them listen. Mike? On top of it yet? No, I'm afraid not. Unfortunately, there was a paint warehouse next to the seat of the blaze. When that went up, all hell broke loose. Arson? No doubt about it. Evidence of cotton wool and candle wax. Same with the other four blazes. Other four? All arranged to start about the same time. What do you mean? There's four other bonfires like this going tonight? No, no, no. We've got those under control. We don't have this sort of thing to spread to. I wonder if it's Bishop. Well, if it is, he's a madman. What sort of casualty list? I can't be sure. We think most of the districts were evacuated in time. Casualties should be confined to your men and mine. Except for the night watchman from Atlas Tank. Dead? Died on the way to hospital. No phone call, eh? Nothing. That sort of spoils the pattern, doesn't it? Or maybe eliminates Bishop. Yeah. Well, let's find out, shall we? We've got photographs. Let's find him if we have to knock on every door in London. Get onto it, Dave, as fast as you can. Yep. Yeah. We'll spend the rest of the night at the yard in case anything breaks. hundred thousand pounds and four dead. All right. If that's what it takes. One more really big demonstration. But this time, not just rags and benzene. Once Harvey admitted the gun was his, the rest was easy. A full confession? The lot. His statement's being typed up now. Good work. Fine. Thank you, sir. You're sure of the identification? Right. Thanks. Oh. Report from E-Division. Did you make this? Yes, with my own little coffee bean. You're a genius. Go on. The PC was showing Bishop's photograph round on his beat. Yes. The owner of an ironmonger shop recognized it as a man who went in to buy candles and benzene. When? Yesterday. Well, that clinches it. Delivered to the editor of the Daily Mail an hour ago. To whom it may concern. The slums of London must be cleared. The authorities have not acted, therefore I must step up my activities. I will not hesitate to start the third fire of London. Unsigned. I want Bishop's picture plastered over every newspaper and television set in London. Right. God knows how many people have handled these, but get them over to fingerprints, see if they can come up with anything. You think he means it, George? He means it.
Bishop. Oh. Hello, Mr. White. How have you been? I haven't seen you for weeks. Oh, no, I've been busy. Shouldn't go in there, you know. Yes, I'm sorry. I, I was looking for you. I know. I owe you two pounds. Oh, no, 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 it isn't that. I mean, there's no rush. Never let it be said that Bill White doesn't pay his debts. There you are. Give me a receipt and with all square. Well, no, I haven't got my receipt book at the moment. Give it to me later. Now, don't be silly. I don't need a receipt. Uh, and listen, the, the missus wants some of those towels. You know, the fluffy ones with the yellow stripes. Oh, yes, I'll bring some over next time then. I must rush. I'll, I've got to keep an appointment. Well, well, don't forget. She wants some oven mitts too. Oh, right. <laughs> And what's the registration number? Thank you very much for reporting it. Bye. At approximately 4 p.m. yesterday, Bishop bought a second-hand motor scooter in Hampstead Road. Registration number 383 PNK. He was given a helmet and goggles. A uniform of faceless millions. <laughs> going to show them. Hey, Bill. You want to put a pound on Blue Knight in the 330? It's a dead cert to win. My brother-in-law told me, and he works in a bookies. You listening? There's four sticks of dynamite missing. Ah, you can't count. Hey, have you seen this? Hmm? Isn't that that fellow that comes around here selling us stuff? My God! What's the matter? Where are you going? A telephone! Sorry, I didn't know you were home. Yes, I, I came home early. Isn't it a lovely day? It's the time of the year when you feel you'd like to be in the country. Yes. Would you, uh, would you like a cup of tea? Oh, no, thanks. I've got to go out. I'm sorry. It, it won't take a minute. The kettle is on. You no, know, I've got to rush. I'm late for an appointment.
What time? How many sticks? All right, Mr. White, thank you very much for calling us. Goodbye. He's on the loose with four sticks of dynamite. Bishop, notify every constable on duty, all divisions. Extreme caution, but get him. It's not true. You've seen this before? Yes, several times. He talks to it. What does he say? I don't know. I only heard him once. It belonged to his little girl. Do you know his wife and daughter were burned to death? Yes, we know. Oh, I can't believe it. He, he's such a nice man. How long has he been living here? About a month. He arrived on the doorstep one evening on his own. Oh, Mr. Gideon, I never even asked him for references. He's that kind of man. You'd, you'd trust him on sight. Mrs. Tennyson, he started these fires. God pity him. I'll have to station two policemen here till he comes back, and I don't want you to touch anything. I want the fingerprint people to go over this room. I'll tell John. That's the slums that Bishop will make for. Let the appropriate divisions. Right. Mr. Gideon, there's no doubt, is there? He, he did start these fires. I'm afraid there's no doubt at all. Danny, I'll ever believe in anybody again. <laughs> Paper Company, Jim Street, Whitechapel. Bishop seen in area. Here we go. the entire area, take all PCs off routine jobs and send them in detachments to warehouses and tenements. Four sticks of dynamite. Yeah. Three to go.
Driving along Camden Street. All cars to the area immediately. Extreme caution. You can say that again. started. Scene of the first fire. House Bishop lived in. The house Bishop died in. <laughs> 